Like I was saying this morning, boy, I was reminded how beautiful the church was, how beautiful everything is, and uh, you guys have something I hope you take, you don't take it for granted. Uh, today, I wish I can tell you that the sermon's going to be for individuals out there. It's going to be for the world, but it's not. Uh, you think it's hard sometimes when you go to work and performing for your boss and doing everything that your boss wants you to do. Imagine having God as yours. Uh, when I began to prepare for this day, for such a time as this, I was like, Lord, I don't want to give them something to just tickle their ears and they smile and they go away. Or God, I want to give them something that can help them. That's why we're all at church. We're all at church to get help, to survive another week, another time as this. I believe we all have turned on the news. We've all have gotten to the point where, to be honest, we're kind of sick of COVID. We're kind of sick of the mask. We're kind of sick of everything. And we just want to get back to everything being normal again. But it seems like in today and times which we live in, that seems further away than close. Like my dear brother said earlier, I talked to several people in California. What they're facing there is something that seems like it's something from a foreign country. You can't raise your voice and sing to God. It was already beautiful what we did here where everybody was singing on one accord and boy, if that wasn't good enough right there, then we all get to open our Bible today and hear something from the Word of God. There's nothing like being in church. Those of you who don't get an opportunity to come to church and you're watching online, I understand. And some of us, or whatever, if you're home, I understand there's certain circumstances to keep you there. But every opportunity and any opportunity you get to be in the house of God, let's make sure that that we're definitely faithful. Pastor, if you're checking up to making sure that we're not burning anything, I'd like to say hello, we miss you, and can't wait for you to come back. But can I tell you this? Our people in America are hurting. In California today, they have said, in one particular church, and I know in Santa Cruz, they have said, if you show up and your people come, even if you social distance, even if everybody wears masks, even if everybody wears gloves, even if everybody does under the guidelines that we all are like, come on. This is a little crazy. They will be fined $5,000 for each service. This is not in Asia. This is not in China. This is in America. Last week, they were already fined $10,000 just for doing what the Bible said to do. They're not having a rally. They're not causing damage to anyone. They're simply serving their God. I said all that to say this. Let us not take for granted the time that we have. COVID has already kept some of us out of the church for maybe for a week or two. Most churches closed down. But now that we're back, let's take advantage of the opportunities that we have. Speaking of take advantage, uh, let's jump into the, the message that we have. Um, I encourage you to turn into your Bibles to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. One of the things oftentimes that I do um, with congregations, I said it's very important that you bring your Bible, that you have your own Bible. For one, um, because you have your own Bible that makes it much easier for you to have that daily walk with God. Boy, there's nothing like knowing God personally. Boy, I challenge you to do that. I challenge you to know him personally, not as just a God or Jesus, as the world would know him. But know him as your friend. Know him as your comforter. Those of you who question that are, well, why, why would we know him as that? Oh, I encourage you. You're probably the individual that we're speaking about today that needs to get into the Bible just a little bit more. And besides, if any other means... There's another religion who's very big, very prominent. They told their people, you no longer have to bring your Bibles. We will interpret and tell you everything ourselves. Now their people are just as wicked as the world. Starts with a C 
And I believe you can finish it from there. If we don't watch it, we too can be very easily manipulated. That's why most churches tell you to bring your Bible. And the pastor tells you, just like the pastor here tells you, open your Bibles to such and such. That's like, that's him saying, don't believe it just because I said it, believe it because it's truth. It's in the Bible. The story that we're going to read here is another popular uh, Bible version or Bible story, if you would say. We start in chapter 15 and verse 11. He said, and he said, a certain man had two sons. By the way, this is Jesus telling the story, telling a story to individuals. He said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger one of them said to his father, Father, give me thy portions of good that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. You must understand something. Before we go on, this is a Jewish culture that we are hearing and it should be applied in that context. The father did not need to give his portion to his son. The father could have said no and would have been justified in that. Can you imagine going up to your father now and being like, Father, I see that you have some stuff here. Give me my portion. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you very closely. Come here again. Of course, we all know you wouldn't want to do that because my dad would be like, are you trying to steal from me? Are you trying to take something that you haven't earned and want it from me? Boy, there would be a serious problem. But yet we find the father here doing that. Now, during this time, you must understand, there's two sons. The first son, the oldest, and normally those of you who are older, you realize, and you're the first in your family, you realize there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that first son, especially if there's other siblings that come along. Oftentimes you could be the babysitter. You could be the one that your parents holds to a higher esteem. You were the baby. You were the one that were protected. But also being protected, you had to do certain things. There were certain rights that came with being the older one. In the Jewish culture, with that being said, you got one third or you got two thirds of the inheritance. When your father left something, it was often that was, was left to the first son. In this case, it would be he got two thirds. The second son would get one third. But that only came with death. And by the way, normally it came with a stipulation. Son, if you do this and this, then you get it. In today's time, it's like a parent leaving their kids in inheritance. Oftentimes it's not uncommon to where it'd be like, you cannot touch this inheritance until you are 21. That is a stipulation that is put upon it in our time. So that shows you a little bit of relation there. So this is a Jewish young man. He wants his own. And now we see in verse 13, and not many days after that, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance which wise is living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent himself uh, and he sent himself unto his field to feed the swine. Oh, if we were to stop there, there's so much that could be even said up until that point. First of all, we see this young man left home. He decided not only did he take what his father had worked for, what his father had saved, now he has it to himself and he decided, I know better than mom and dad, per se. And now he went and joined the people out there, the people that we call the world. You know, they often said everybody has friends when they have money. And we see that he spent everything and now he finds himself in another country that he even, the Bible said that he joined. And not only did he join this country, but we find him feeding the swine. You must understand something. Jewish culture does not like swine. It is, you are not to be associated with swine. In fact, to insult somebody would be to call them a pig. 
And it was considered at that time a dirty thing. Now thank God today that we are not under that. Bacon makes everything better. <laughs> oh, you like, how can you fix steak? Wrap it in bacon. Oh, 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 oh it's so delicious. But can you imagine being a Jewish young man? And now, not only are you associated with swine, but you're under a Gentile, which you're not supposed to be at this particular point in time. Not only are you working for someone that you're not supposed to be working for, but now you are feeding something that you're not even supposed to be associated with. That thing, beware that your sin will take you farther than what you want. Perfect example. Now he's feeding this. And we see later on, well, not only is he feeding it, but now all of a sudden he finds himself, his self in such a low place that now he is eating what they eat. Can I remind you of the story of through my life? I remember when my grandmother, she used to have a bucket in the house. And that bucket was for scraps. And whenever you had eaten the food that she had given you, and especially when you were a young little lad, you had eaten it to the point that she was satisfied. And she knew that you weren't going to eat anymore. And it was of to her liking. And only then, then you were to take the leftovers. You were to go to that bucket. By the way, it's mysteriously that that bucket was always by itself in a corner. Because there was a reason for it. Because it stunk. You didn't want anything else by that bucket because spoiled milk went into that, that bucket. All of a sudden, now you would go over to that bucket and the house would be a little warm and you go in and scrape something in and you're like, Ooh, quickly scrape something in and run to the other side. Well, eventually, after a day or two, that bucket was full. And she would be like, Jamie, you need to go take the bucket and you need to go dump it. But feed the, the pigs. And I'd be like, in my mind, I was thinking, well, Grandma, you can go feed the pig as much as I could. But we all know that wasn't going to last. In my house, that would have been a switch applied to hind parts. If you, so I didn't like those results that I would get from that. So I was like, fine. I remember sometimes she would help me. She would pour it into an another container. That way it's half and half. And boy, I would get it and I would pick it up. And even when I pick it up, man, all of a sudden you walk outside and we have a wonderful thing called humidity. Ladies, it does a great thing for the hair. <laughs> Here I am walking. The heat is now being applied even more to these buckets. The humidity is making this wonderful smell just loom around you, almost like Charlie Brown, that character. <laughs> that used to have like the bugs and stuff. Can you imagine walking and I mean, the smell is there. Now it's heavy. I'm a wee little lad. And of course I'm picking it up and I'm going back and forth. And as I'm going back and forth, it's now beginning to sway. And that smell is coming up even more. And you're trying to keep it from you. And all of a sudden you get to the point where the swine is, where the pig is and you try to shoo them back as much as you can and you open the gate and when you open the gate and you step there and all of a sudden when you step there woo, 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 boy the ground is not as sturdy as it was outside not only that but you realize that the ground looks like mud but doesn't smell like mud <laughs> and now you walk into that and you're a little bit unstable and you're carrying these things and the pigs know what's coming and they decide to bump you. And when they bump you, all of a sudden now you're face now. Ah! I don't think I need to tell the audience what now is being applied to the fingers. And of course my grandma was like, just feed them. And then you pick it up and, and man, they're Man, they're all over the place eating this stuff up like it's a ribeye steak. Man, just, I mean, absolutely enjoying it. Now, one time, not one time was I like, hmm, I wonder how that tastes. 
you know what, if I could just have that bread back, that little piece of bread that is now, you know, we talked about bacon and the bacon being like flabby. I mean, that bread was just, you know, imagine eating that. Never one time did that come across. But here we find this young man like that. When we also see later on that this young man decides and finally comes to himself. I know where I should be. Oftentimes, even in our life, that's why people come to the church, because they know where they should be. They knew who they should be serving. And now all of a sudden they come back. Filthy, torn up. He comes back. And even before he comes back, he does what you and I do. Boy, he starts to think to himself, well, if they say this, then I'll say this. And well, if they say that, then I'll, I'll say this. Ladies, you've all been there. Well, if I go to work and so-and-so, whatever says something to me, or whatever, it's going to be on. No, no, no. And your honey's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, mm, mm. Absolutely terrible. You know, when you start wagging, you'd be like, mm, 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 honey child, let me, let me, let me tell you something. <clears throat> or whatever, you start going, then you know, what are you doing? You're like, if they say something, I'm going to have a reply. Well, he did the same thing. He said, boy, when I come back, he's like, as soon as I come back, I know my dad is probably going to be like, come here. He's going to want to have that talk. We know, we all hate that talk. Come here. Boy, that's serious talk. Nobody wants to have, and he's like, I'm just going to say, Father, I'm not worthy to even be thy son. Why? Because I've already squandered my inheritance. I've already made the family name seem terrible. So because of this, I'm not even worthy to be called thy son. But we see that it was totally different what the father did. The father didn't even wait. The father came running to him. And uh, uh, during that time, I would imagine the father probably already forgave him even before his son had to ask. We see there. Boy, if we were to even back up more, and I was to phase a question like this to the crowd, I'd be like, today, can you see yourself in the prodigal son? You've been dibbling, you've been dabbling with the world, with the things of the world, and now you yourself, without anybody even having to name your sin, get, have gotten to the point where you know now it's time to come home. Let it be said that everybody can come home in this church. Let it be said, no matter how crazy things get, you can always come home. You can always get things right. Hey, let us all be like even the father that was in there. He could have easily, justly said, no, you've already squandered. You already did everything. Depart. Go. Leave. Suffer your own consequences. Best case scenario, I'll do like what you were, what you were thinking. Go be with the slaves and no longer have my family name. He could have done that. But yet we see the father welcoming him back. Let it be said, if anybody ever walks through those doors, maybe in a place like this, everybody knows who they are and what they've been doing. But let it be said, when they come with the right frame of mind, they come to get things right. Let it be said that you'd be one of the first ones. Welcome. If you ever need anything, I'm here for you. I want to help you. We would want somebody to do the same thing to us. So why wouldn't we do the same thing to them? What a great example. And then we come to the third son, which we didn't realize, <clears throat> read, but just for the sake of time, and I want to be respectful of that for you, the third son was doing what he was supposed to. He was working. He was doing that, and sometimes he gets a hard rap because he comes home, he sees a party. We all want to be a part of a party. Nobody wants to be that person, didn't get the invite, 
How horrible is that? You're like, hey, what's everybody doing? Oh, they're all partying. You didn't get the invite? No? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Awkward. <clears throat> Boy, we all want to be a part. Can you imagine him working? And he was like, what is this about? And then all of a sudden, it's explained to him what it's about. And he's like, well, I didn't go anywhere. I didn't get a party for me. I stayed here. I did what I was supposed to. Just like some of us. We're doing what we're supposed to. We face that grind sometimes, even in the Christian life, of just coming to church, trying to be faithful, trying to, ju trying to juggle the world and Christianity to the point where we know we have to live there. We know we have to put up everything. But now we're trying to juggle and trying to do everything. But let us also take a lesson from that young man. His whole life, maybe from here on out, he did everything the way he was supposed to. But he's only really known for that one flaw. That's the one that preachers normally preach about. That's the one that people normally think about is that one time when he probably could have forgiven immediately, he didn't. Let it be said of you and me, life is precious. So let us guard ourselves all the time. It only takes that one time. Mom, dad, for you to destroy your family. Only takes that one time, little one. Why well, I want to leave home? Well, my friends tell me that there's a better world out there. Only takes that one time for you to destroy yourself and never get back to what you've had before. Let us take advantage of the opportunity that our Heavenly Father has given us. You guys have a church family. I believe that most of you guys know other, other individuals where you know if you need them, you can pick up the phone and call them. Don't you ever take that for granted. That's why I love that we call ourselves brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us act like it. But there's one other person that most of the time when we tell this story, we never ever mention. And for the next five minutes, I want to give them the full credit that they deserve. If you look in your Bibles, once again, 15, chapter 22. Now we see what we call the prodigal son has now come home. He's now seen that his father is accepting him. In verse 22 it says, but father said to a servant, father said to who? Father said to the servant. There was another person in the story. And we drop down to verse 26, and it said, And he called one of the servants and asked him what these things meant. That was not only the father asking and calling upon the servant, that was the son asking and calling upon the servant. But one of the things that we should learn from the servant is he was dependable. See, the servant easily could have gotten jealous. The servant always did his job. He always showed up when no credit was given, no well done, no, hey, good job. Hey, everybody enjoyed that, but the servant stayed up, made that fatted calf that was killed. I wonder who fed that fatted calf. I wonder who had to wake up early in the morning and put up with that smell and that stink and who needed to be found faithful in order for that to happen. I wonder who's the one who got the, the robe and the, made the ring and, and had everything set apart. I wonder who was the one that was so faithful that the father, when it was time to prepare for that one to come home and throw the party, boy, he didn't want somebody that may get it done and, or may do it half-heartedly. He wanted somebody that he could depend on. Therefore, he called on the servant. Oftentimes in our life, we need to be like the servant. Most times, we're not going to get credit. We're not going to get credit even, Lord forbid, in the house of God. Or just being a Christian. In a Christian, we're supposed to do the great commandment. We're supposed to be, do the great commission. 
We're supposed to find other people, tell them about God, get them into the house of God, get them saved, get them baptized, teach them, and then they do the same thing. And we grow. There's no credit that comes with that. There's no, whoo, well done. Hey, you get five tokens. Good job. I don't see that. Well, boy, we need to be like the servant. Be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful. Through the good times, be faithful. I wonder who was there on that porch with him, with the father. I wonder who probably stayed up with the father and be like, hey, I'll pray with you. I can only imagine my imagination. There was probably one of those servants who prayed with the father, who stayed up just like any one of you would do if it was your child. You would stay up and beg God to take care of them. You would stay up and beg God to keep them from harm. Because nobody wants to ever get that phone call about their little one being in harm's way. But I can only imagine, maybe there was someone else who saw that one coming down the road before the father. I imagine he probably stood up. Sir, 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 look, look, sir, look, look, there he is, sir. And then all of a sudden, then that action took place. And we see the dad tearing off the porch. But even when the dad got to him, he didn't have to search for him. He didn't have to say, hey, come here. I imagine he immediately turned because the servant probably ran with him and was probably there. Like we are, as soon as we go door to door, somebody talks to someone, they call it being a silent partner where we're just there. Or being silent, Lord God, please just take care of the situation. Lord God, this is someone who could know you. Lord God, Holy Spirit, please just speak to him. They call it being a silent partner. I imagine he probably was a silent partner here. Where he's just like, Lord God, please just help this situation to work out. Lord God, please help this boy. When he comes back, he comes back with the right notion of coming back. But there's something else we find there. In this verse, I pointed out that yes, we all need to be like the servant, and we should. But in verse 23, we see this. It said, And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. We've already talked about that. And then it said, And let us. Let who? Let us. Let us eat. That's more than one person. That's even more, probably than two. You know why? Because it was probably the servant that got to eat too. The servant got to participate a little bit in that enjoyment. All that hard work that he did that nobody ever saw. All of a sudden we now find him at his master's table. Eating with him, enjoying the fruits of his labor. I can't tell you today that someone's going to come up to you and be like, hey, well done. But how much more would it be later on in our life? Maybe some of us, when we close our eyes in death, and all of a sudden we find ourselves in front of our Lord and Savior. And he said, I remember that time when this came into your life. I remember that time when this situation came and this situation came, he was like, some of it, I even had to give to you to meet all of your needs because you said you wanted to become a better Christian. So I put this in your life just to see how you'd react, just to see if you would still be faithful to me. And you still were faithful. You still told people about me. You still showed up to the church even when you didn't feel like it. And all of a sudden we hear those words that don't quite mean the same when someone else tells it to us, but when our Heavenly Father tells it to us and He says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I can only imagine during that time when the Bible talks about there's tears in heaven. Can you imagine God Himself telling you, well done. I'm proud of you. Can you imagine God in all of His glory saying that He's proud of you? You were faithful. I can only imagine maybe that comes with a hug because we're made in the image of him. And we all know, well, there's nothing like a hug between a couple. 
showing that embrace, and God embraces us, it's going to be worth it all. And then it's going to be worth some of the trials and some of the tribulations and some of the stuff that we go through. You say it's not hard. No, it isn't. But we've got to remain faithful. God needs us to go out into the world to help. He's already told us that the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. We need teenagers. We need young people to be servants. See a need, be a servant. Hey, preacher, can we do this in the church? Can we help out? Hey, one day, can we take up the offering plates? Hey, one day, can we do this? Can we do that? Why not? You should put the pressure on the older ones to be like, hey, hey, hey man, they're, they're showing up, man, they're doing work, man, we need to get with it too. Hey, preacher, what else do you want done? Hey, let's get this done. I guarantee you one of the most successful, happy moments is when you guys work together as a family and built that add-on. The hard work that went there. And the people who really enjoy it were the servants who just showed up because something needed to be done and now all of a sudden they can reap what they <clears throat> they can sow what they reap why because they put that time in and now it's even more special I love it I think it's amazing walking in there <whistles> I mean it's awesome but I can only imagine how much more it is to that person who actually got on their hands and knees and actually laid that carpet who didn't who wasn't tell hey boy! I'm pretty sure a preacher wasn't like woo Go, go. He didn't have on his cheerleading outfit. Go, 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 go. I'm pretty sure that didn't happen. In fact, I know him. I guarantee you. <laughs> that didn't happen. Because he probably was one of the ones just like you. Down there. Serving away. Serving away. If we're like one of the prodigal sons, that's great. If we're the first one, time to come home. No better time than this to get things right with your God. Don't let anybody walk out of there. There will be no excuse why you can't come home. One of the best things we could do for pastor for his birthday, make sure that when he comes back, the church is right. If we're that other son, boy, let us guard ourselves to make sure that, boy, <clears throat> we know that there can just be that one time we can mess up and it can destroy everything so let's set up that safeguard that we have that we can in our life and let us all be like the servant let us be found faithful we may get to eat a little bit here on earth of what's at the king's table but one thing that the bible does tell us is one day he's going to make all things right he's going to make all things right you may not get the credit here but i guarantee you when it's all said and done you're going to be smiling pretty big, and you're going to be sad that it was well, well worth it.